Okay, so uh, we will start defining mapping so basically we have two non empty set non empty set and we define a mapping from a to B, A, B are two sets such that this is A set, this is B set. So, we take every element of A. So, this is an element in A. Now, if so by some rule we can con we can map this element to an element here in B. Okay. In some way, some rule we will we'll take some example of such a rule. So, suppose there is a rule that we take an element from A and then that will be mapped to an we take an element from A that will be mapped to an element in B unique element. It is not that A is also mapping to some other element this is not a mapping. Okay. So, this 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 uh, this transformation must be unique from uh, A to unique element. So, then this is called a mapping or function. So, let us define that uh, let us formally define that suppose that this is the definition of mapping suppose that to each element and this must be for each element from the set A each element in a in a set a is assigned by some rule by some manner or some rule or manner or rule to an uh, unique this is very important unique element of a set set B we call such assignment as such assignment if mapping we call such assignment a mapping or function mapping which is also called a function this is the definition this is the definition of okay this is the definition of a uh, mapping or function. So, what it is telling? So, we have two sets A B. So, we have two sets A B here A, here B. Now, if we take an element from A, say small a, and this is every element, every element in A is assigned to an element, unique element. B. I mean another element may assign to some other element may be same element, but this is unique this is unique. So, this is called a mapping and this is denoted by A to B this is a mapping which is from A to B. Okay. So, this is this is the unique. So, it is not that from A we are going to B and again from A we are going to C that is not possible for the mapping. So, this assignment is unique. So, from from a fix from a given a we are going to a uh, point in B. So, that assignment is unique. Okay, let us take some example. Say we have two sets 
example of mapping. Suppose you have two sets, say A, B, A, there are three elements set and say another set which are having say four elements x, y, z, w. Now, suppose A is going to x, B is going to y, C is going to say w and if you have another element say d, d is also going to x. So, this is the mapping. So, A is basically this set, B is this set, A consists of A, B, C, D, B consists of x, y, z, w. This is a mapping, because if we uh, if we take a, an element from A, there is a unique element in this. But if we have like this, say we have A, B, C, and here we have say x, y, z, w. Now, suppose like this, A is going to x and also A is going to y and B is going to this, this is, this is not a mapping not a mapping, because why it is not a mapping, because this this is this a is going to x and y. So, this is not a unique transformation, this transformation has to be unique. From a given a, we have a unique y, unique element in b, such that a is going to that element, a is mapped to that element. Okay, so, that is unique. So, this is not a mapping, because A, a cannot go to two different, uh, A cannot map to two different element in B, A has to map to a single element in B. So, that is very important, but this is a mapping, although these two, two element, two different element map to a same element, that is okay. This is a mapping, but this is not a mapping. Okay. So, now we define a uh, range of a function or mapping. Suppose, f is a function from a to b. Now, range of f is basically, it is basically a subset of b such that the all the all the uh, points which is covering by uh, this points of a. So, that means, for example, for this case, there is no points, no element here which is mapped to z. So, this is b. So, for this case, range of f is those points which is having a pre image x, y, w is the range. Okay. This is the subset of b. Okay. By the way, a is called domain we will come back to range. This is called domain, domain of the function or the mapping and this is called codomain. This is the non definition, this is the domain and for each element in the domain, there is a uh, element in the uh, range, I sorry element in the codomain. So, that means, if we have a a and if we have a b, now every element say a, there is a unique element here which is called a of a. So, a, a element is mapped to a unique element. So, this is called image of a, this element is called is denoted by f of a, this is a b element, this is a x some element. So, this is called image of A and if we denote this by say some notation y, say this is a y. So, y is defined by f of A, this is called image of A and this A is called pre image of y. So, A is called pre image of y, okay. A is called pre image of y. And 
the range of a function means it is a subset of this which is having the pre image. So, we will just excluding those point which is not covering by this mapped which point are not covering by that is the range. So, range of f is basically set of points in B such that there exists a x such that f x equal to this is the definition. Okay, so, that means it is set of all points. So, it is basically the set of all points. So, this is a this is b range means it is set of all points y such that there is a x which is mapped to this point. Okay. So, this is the range and this is the codomain. So, if it is outside the range means there is no point which is mapped to this, there is no points here in the domain which are mapped to this. So, this point is having no pre image. So, that is called uh, that is called uh, so this is called range of f. Okay. So, now let us take some example of the range. Now, suppose we define a function like this r to r and rule is we just square it up x square. So, this is our r and this is our same r we take a point x and we just square it up x square. Okay. Then what is the range? Range is basically the positive real number because if we say minus 2 is going to 4 plus 2 this is also going to 4, but there is uh, there is no minus 1 have the pre image. So, range of this function is is basically r plus all the positive number we can cover, because there is no real number here if we square it it will give us a minus, okay, because our domain is real. So, the range is just the positive real number this is the range of this. Okay. So, this is this is an example of a uh, uh, mapping. Now, we define uh, what is called one to one mapping on to mapping. So, let us just define one to one one to one mapping and it is called injective mapping also. Okay. So, one to one mapping means, uh, so if we have a mapping A to B, it is one to one if we have this type of situation like say A, B, C, we have three points and here we have x, y, z, say w. Now, A is going to x, say B is going to z, this is going to this. This is an example of one to one. So, that means, no two point is mapping to same. So, if, if x 1 is not equal to x 2, this implies f of x 1 is not equal to f of x 2. So, in the other word, if f of x 1 equal to x 2, then this must imply x 1 equal to x 2 and this is must true for all x 1 x 2. This must true for all x 1 x 2. Okay. Then it is a 1 to 1. But this is this is an example of one to one, but suppose we have a D which is mapping to this, this is not a one to one, because we have two points which are different, this is x 1 and this is x 2, but their image is same, they are mapped to a same point. So, this is not a injective function. 
Okay, so now another example is just now we have seen that r, r x square that is also not a 1 to 1. So, if we define this r to r, now if we define this rule as x square, now this is not 1 to 1. Why? Because this is r, this is r. Now, if you take minus any minus number and then corresponding plus number, both are going to the same mapping of their square 4. Here it is 2, so it is 4. So, not 1 to 1. Okay. So, this is an example which is not 1 to 1. Now, if you take just f x equal to r to r f x equal to x, this is a non to one function, because everybody is mapped to itself. Okay, so, now we have uh, another definition, which is called on to function, on to mapping, on to and it is also called sub subjective. On to means it must cover all the elements in the codomain. So, that means a from a to b will be called on to if the range of f is basically b. So, it is covering all the points. So, all the points in b is ha having the pre image. So, that means this is a, this is b. Now, every point. So, range is, is actually b. So, if you take any point here y, then it must have a pre image x such that f x equal to y. Okay. So, this is the on to. So, it must cover all the points. So, if you take this function f r to r f x equal to x square, is this on to? No, because this is not covering the negative real numbers because there is no pre image of that. So, minus 2 is has no uh, pre image because there is no real number if you square it will give us minus 2, but if you make this to be plus the codomain then this is on to because range is basically the r plus. So, depending on the a b and the rules we can have the uh, we can have the on to function. So, now we define the bijective function bijective bijective mapping. So, which is basically both 1 to 1 and 1 to, then we call the mapping is bijective. If it is both 1 to 1 and 1 to, then it is called a bijective function. So, is this a bijective? Is this function a bijective function? This is on to because the range is r plus, but this is not a 1 to 1 function because this minus 1 any minus and plus number will map to the same number. So, minus a plus a is going to a square. So, this is not a 1 to 1 mapping. Okay. So, now, but if we take this to be plus then this is a uh, bijective function. So, depending on the codomain, codomain and the rules, we can I mean we just have the bijective function. I mean, okay. so now just take some more example. So, let us just have a example of 1 to 1. pictorial example. So, this is a I have three points a a b c and here suppose I have four points 
x, y, z, w. Now, this is going to this, this is going to this, this is going to this. This is a one to one, but not on to, because z is not covering. There is no pre image of z over here. Okay. But if we take this one, say uh, this is A B C and then we have A B C D and we have X Y Z, A is going to here, B is going to here. Okay. This is a function where it is on to on to function, but not one to one. Okay. Now, if we have say uh, here, if we have d and this is say uh, this is say going here. So, this is what? This is not even on to and not even one to one. So, this is not one to one, not on to also. Okay. But if we have this one, if this is going to z, then this is one to one and on to. So, this is a bijective mapping. Anyway, these are the pictorial view of this. Now, we define uh, inverse function and then we talk about the composition of two functions and then we move to the permutations. Okay, so, inverse function suppose we have a let a be a be a bijective mapping. So, that means, we have domain and codomain, if we take an element from here, we will get an element of here under this rule f. Now, it is bijective, now we can define uh, inverse function, this is from b to a. So, that means, this is now this is the domain, now this is this is mapping by this. So, if we uh, define the other way around. So, y is mapped to x by the inverse rule of this and this is possible if this is a bijective mapping, because this has to be one to one otherwise this inverse one will not be a unique one and this has to be on to because this domain. So, for each element in the domain must have a image. So, if it is not on to then image will not happening. So, this inverse means, so f inverse of y is basically x. So, this is how we define the inverse. Okay, now, we define the composition of two mapping. Composition of composition operation. Suppose, we have two mapping f a to b and so a from a to b and g from b to c. So, we have another mapping c. So, we take an element from here, it is mapped to an element y under this of under this rule g f. Now, we have a function g also g is taking an element from here and it is mapped to an element here from z over here. So, this is g. Now, if you combine these two rules like x is first mapped to y, then it is mapped to this. Now, if we consider direct this one that x is mapped to y. So, this is also a mapping. Now, this mapping will be from where to where this is h mapping, this will be a to c. 
Now, this h is nothing but denoted by g composed with f. So, what is g compose f x is basically we first operate f then we operate g on it. So, that means, we take an element from x we mapped under this mapping f it will give us an element in here b and then again if we map by the mapping g it will give us a element here. Okay. So, this is the composition of two, but this is the convention we use because this is first depending on which operation we are doing first, we are doing first f. So, that is why f uh, g compose with f. Okay. Now, is this now we can have some properties on this mapping like whether this is a, a one to one mapping or not. So, is this a one to one mapping? Well, this is this will depend on the function f. So, suppose function f and g. So, for b 1 to 1 we take this g dot x x one equal to okay, uh, for simplicity we take this is h, h is equal to g compose f. So, basically we take h of x 1 is equal to h of x 2. Okay. So, now this will be uh, if, if we can show that x 1 equal to x 2 then this is a 1 to 1 mapping. Now, for that what we need to show? So, this is basically g of f of x 1 equal to g of f of x 2. Now, if g is 1 to 1 then this can be written as f of x 1 equal to f of x 2, if g is 1 to 1. And again if f is 1 to 1, then this can be written as x 1 equal to x 2. So, this composition will be 1 to 1, if uh, g and f will be uh, both 1 to 1. Okay. So, in the next class we will talk about the permutation function and then we will move to the some other issues of this set. Thank you.